Hey, welcome back to Mr. Hayes. Hayes is world of math. We're going to formalize this whole constructing a confidence interval for proportions. And so a couple of things, um, we're going to hit the basics and we'll do an example like usual. Obviously, pause when you need to and obviously always like, subscribe, hit the little bell, and all that other stuff. You need to get to 300 subscribers. Maybe we'll do something special for that. Anyway, so anyway, we've got conditions. You need to say that it's random. And again, oftentimes it's said within the context itself, so that's fine just to quote that. We need to hit the 10% rule, which means that our sample size can't be more than 10% of our population. And normal, we can just go through large counts and do this. We can just do you know, normal times p hat, or and uh, sample size times p hat has to be bigger than 10, and sample size times not p hat has to be bigger than 10. And again, these are all things that we've done before. Sometimes they even will say that it's normally distributed, in which case I'm fine with that. But anyway, those are the things that should be in the back of your head when you see confidence interval for p. In terms of the nitty gritty and the math, a couple of things here, your critical values. Critical values, remember, are the z scores, the number of standard deviations you are away from centered proportions because the confidence interval is centered along what we get for p hat. So 90% or Z score, and yeah, it, the Z score is actually Z, um, and then a little asterisk up in the corner showing that that's, if I remember correctly, it's showing that, I mean, it indicates it's a critical value. It's more or less saying that we're bringing it to the table instead of us calculating it. Um, so Z star is 1.645, 95% Z star is 1.960, and 99% has a Z star of 2.56. These are the common ones. If they give you an uncommon one, remember, it's just going to be inverse norm of whatever your tail size is to find the tail. It's going to be 1 minus your confidence interval divided by 2. And again, if you've got the new um, TI-94s with the updated software package, sometimes you can also just indicate middle, and then you can just use whatever your critical value is there, or your critical percentage there. And then the last one, formulas, putting it all together, point estimate. Um, for a confidence interval is equal to a point estimate plus or minus the margin of error, which we already knew. In this case here, we're going to use our sample, which is p hat. And again, remember the whole idea of this is that we don't know what the proportion is. So we have to do the sample so we can get an idea of what the of what the population is. What the proportion is for the population. So we've got p hat plus or minus the critical value from over here times whatever our standard error is. Um, or excuse me, not the standard error. Um, standard deviation for p hat is, which is this part right here. Z times that tells us what our standard error is okay, um, for p hat. Now, the example here is talking about what you want to be when you grow up. So they surveyed a bunch of kids. Um, and some, obviously, you get when you guys survey a 1,000 kids what they want to be when they grow up, you can get a whole bunch of different things because all these kids were under the age of 12. And so we want to know how what's the confidence interval of the true number of a uh, true proportion of kids who would end up wanting to be a doctor. So go ahead and hit pause, look through it, come on back, and we'll check your answers. Now, one thing that's important to remember on this is that you need to go through and answer what they're asking. So here, notice they're asking that it is a true proportion. So you need to do everything in terms of proportions. This type of problem, I often sometimes will see kids do it with just the 55 kids and do it with a mean, um, which we haven't talked about yet. But make sure that you're reading and answering the question that's being asked, not the answer that you think is being, not the answer to the question that you think is being asked. Okay, so critical reading is obviously important. Your English teacher didn't lie to you. So parameter of interest, the parameter of interest is this, P is the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Now, to check this, we have to go through and check the conditions. If the conditions are not met, because that's something else I know from teaching this for a couple of years that kids will ask, oftentimes you will go through and continue to do everything. You're just going to say proceed with caution, which is like, well, you know, the conditions aren't met. So what we're going to see, yeah, well, we can't guarantee. Okay, But we'll talk more about that as we get into that. So the conditions are this, random sample of 1,000 kids. They tell us that up here in the problem. Survey of a random sample. We're going to take them at their word. We're not going to question them. Our 10% rule, 1,000 is definitely less than one-tenth of all kids in the nation. And normal, we're going to do, look for large counts since it was not said up here. And so 1,000 times 0 0.055. Where did I get the 0 0.055? Well, I took 55 
divided by a thousand to get my p hat value. Okay, um, got that. One thousand times 0 0.055 is fifty-five. That's definitely bigger than ten. And then obviously the rest of it's going to be much bigger than ten because you're going to have nine hundred forty-five people who don't want to be doctors, and that's going to be bigger than ten there. Now we're going to find the critical value. The critical value for the 98% confidence interval, and then we're going to calculate it out what that interval is. Okay, so first of all, we've got 98% here. That's not in our list up on top. Oh, I know, Mr. Hayes, you're so tricky. Yeah, well, if I had come up with this problem, I probably would have done the same. So inverse norm of 0 0.01, why 0 0.01? Because if I have 98% in the middle, I have 2 percentage left point left, one for one side, one for the other. Could I have used inverse norm of 0.98 and said center? Definitely. So I end up getting an inver uh, z score of z score ends up being 2.33. So now remember, point estimate, um, the, the interval is the point estimate plus or minus the margin of error. So to do that, it's going to look like this. And yes, write it out in English and write it out in math. It does a couple of things. If you write it out in English, you confuse yourself less. It also helps integrate the, the, the idea into your head. And then writing out in math is going to help you cement the two parts together. So then that way you can also see it when we do calcula uh, calculate confidence intervals for means. You'll see the connections there and also become, help you become less reliant on the formula chart. Not that you shouldn't use it, but then that way it's just going to be a double check instead of having to copy it all over. Okay. So we're going to plug in all the parts. P hat's 0 0.055. I have my Z star score of 2.33. I am calculating out my standard um, deviation here. Plug it all in. And I'm going to end up getting 0 0.038 to 0 0.072. Again, when you're calculating out this part, be careful. And definitely don't try to type all that stuff in at one time. Okay? Don't be a hero. Heroes are people who do their jobs perfectly, not somebody who's trying to be a hero. Anyway, um, to interpret this, we would say something, and again, this isn't anything new. We've been doing this now for three sections. We are 98% confident that the interval from 0 0.038 to 0 0.072 captures the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor. Okay? So, and if you're, again, if, if you're still having a hard time with the 98% confident part, just remember to go back, take a look at some of the other videos so that hopefully that will get, with a little bit of time and space from it, hopefully hearing it again will be helpful. Anyway, that's it. We now know how to cal cal calculate. We now know how to calculate confidence intervals. I know I've taken up a lot of your time today because that first section was long. The next unit that we're going to be doing, I'm really excited about. It, I haven't done it before. Um, Stats Medic and um, Skew the Script um, came together to talk about immigration, which I know has been a big issue, and um, I'm looking forward to going through that with you because I think it's going to help. Instead of doing things with Hershey's Kisses, it's going to make it a little bit more real. So anyway, I hope to see you then. Talk to you soon.